know your body. Are you eating the right thing, but more importantly, at the right time? On The Good Life today with me, Priyanka Sharma, we test out a new unique wearable device which claims to test your metabolic performance. And can you stay fuller but on a fewer calories? One guide says yes you can, we break it down for you. And also on the show, we'll get you exclusive inside access into a pool party. But this one is only for dogs. But first as always, as we kickstart the show, let's take a look at what's trending in the world of health and lifestyle. and emphasize the need to reduce belly fat. Meal planning, workouts, adequate rest, recovery, protein intake. If you're someone who wants to lead a healthy lifestyle, you'd be familiar with all these terms. We all know about smartwatches that help us track our steps, apps that can help us track our calories. But now, a new product is claiming to help us track our metabolic performance. It's helping us understand our bodies better. So we've put a special agent on the job. Johan is going to be strapping on the sensor and he's going to be putting all these claims to test. Over to you, Johan. The Ultra Human M1 is a continuous glucose monitoring sensor. It gives us a ton of data, which tells us how our body reacts to the food we consume. This helps in enabling users to make decisions about nutrition based on science. The sensor feeds data into an app that presents a graph of how your glucose levels vary throughout the day. The application is packed with information that helps you stay in optimal health. It even offers tips on how to optimize metabolism to improve focus, longevity and activity levels. So here we are with the Ultra Human M1 sensor. Now, I've been wearing this sensor for about two weeks, so it's time for a sensor replacement. Let me take you through the process. First of all, the location of where the sensor is placed, it's quite a perfect spot. It's not in the way much. You just don't notice it when it's there. Wearing the sensor on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not painful. You don't feel it at all. So let me take this one off and I'll place a new sensor. So that is it for the application of the M1 sensor. As you can see, it was quite easy, quite fast. You only need to press lightly and then it just kind of clicks in. And it takes 60 minutes uh, for the sensor to calibrate after you've scanned it for the first time after applying it. Now we have to keep in mind also that this is not a medical device. Uh, it is like for fitness uh, enthusiasts. But I'm curious how the experience has been like for somebody who has been using this for an extended period of time. So I'm gonna go and meet somebody who has tried this for the first time around a year ago. So 
I've come to Sortevi Hard to meet with uh, Joel Eric Pinto, who is a fitness professional and personal trainer. Now, he's been using the Ultra Human M1 sensor for nearly a year now. So it's going to be very interesting to see what his takeaways are. Joel Eric Pinto has always lived a busy life. Packed with work and workouts. He is a certified nutritionist and personal trainer. How did you come upon uh, Ultra Human? Blood glucose is something that I, I believed would be a very big uh, metabolic mm. tracker. And the continuous blood glucose monitor wasn't something new. Like yeah. the diabetic people were using it right. since very long. Uh, but the data uh, in which they were getting it wasn't very clear. So I wrote them an email mm. and... Uh, but I think I was one of the first 30 mm. people to use it. So you have a year of experience using it. How, what was your takeaway? For me, more than... Uh, correcting my habits or patterns, it mm. was more of affirming of uh, mm. if what I was doing was correct. I found myself uh, a lot of times having breakfast and skipping dinner and I okay. felt good that way. Mm. So when I put the uh, CGM on, the Ultra Human on, mm. I realized how that was helping me. The good habits that I had, it just highlighted those. It's like reinforcing and, them. Yes, yeah. and so were the bad habits. If I have this fruit by itself right now, yeah. my blood glucose will start rising. Is there any way to like mitigate the, the glucose spike that you get from fruit? Yeah, so the order in what you eat makes a lot of difference. Pairing your food with something else also makes a difference. So uh, coming back to the fruit, so if I had to have a fruit, like mm. earlier, I'd, like it's, it's a healthy thing to do, that's all we think, right? If mm. you're hungry, just grab an apple instead of something else, but at yeah. the end of the day, it's sugar. If it's right before your workout, it'll still help you, okay. right? It'll help you fuel your workout, sure. but if it's not before a workout, you basically have some nuts with it, mm. add some nut butters to it, mm. or have it with Greek yogurt. Based off of this wisdom, what is kind of the diet that you have found is, uh, is kind of the most ideal? For every, so especially in India, there's so many, uh, there's so much diversity, right. you know, they're vegetarian. Yeah, yes. rice, potato, yes. and only the yeah. vegetables. I think India is the only country which has, ha has carbs with the side of carbs. Yeah, you know? right. So I feel the CGM is very important for India in mm. that very context because our notion of healthy, like rice and rasam, which is just carbs, mm. right? They think it's healthy, but it's not. Otherwise, very healthy, you know, people like mm. these are usually they're non-smokers, non-drinkers. Mm. And then they fail to understand even after not drinking, not smoking, uh, not having any bad habits, mm. how did a lifestyle disease happen to them? Just by adding like paneer or just have a salad before to mitigate, you know, yeah. so like a vegetarian could have like eggs yeah. or a, a salad before the meal, it'll mitigate and yeah. then go for a walk. You know, we've all heard Go right. for walks, right? And even I've heard, but I never did that. And but you think? Do you think that is like especially if you have like a carb-heavy meal that you should go for a walk? Or regardless, I yeah. think after every meal you should go for a walk. You know, it'll just uh, flatten the blood glucose spike even more. When it comes to food choices, every little thing counts. Joel tells me that the difference between having one or two slices of toast for breakfast can push one over the edge into unhealthy glucose levels. Having some protein and fat along with bread is always a good idea. People have different reactions to the same food. As we can see from these graphs, Joel's glucose spike is smaller than mine, although we consumed the same food. We also spoke to some professional athletes about their experiences with using the Ultra Human M1. Saurav Gosal is an elite level squash player who recently won the mixed doubles event, taking home India's first gold at the World Championships. There are um, some really good glucose spikes and there are some really bad ones. Um, so I think when I'm training, the glucose spikes are brilliant. Uh, you know, it shows that, you know, I'm, I'm pushing my body in the right way and my body is primed for physical activity and, and things like that. Um, something that I do eat uh, very uh, regularly for breakfast is, is muesli with milk or, or yogurt. And that's probably, probably my biggest glucose spike in the entire day for food. The other thing which I think has been a bit of an eye opener for me has been how well I'm fueling my body during training and after training. Um, whether it be through electrolyte drinks or electrolyte gels or 
uh, you know protein supplements after after training i think that has been something which uh, we've looked at very closely with my nutritionist uh, to be able to find the right uh, composition of what works for me um, and also the right quantities i think i know now know how long before i can eat what and drink what to be at my best uh, physical state when i go on to court to play my matches Kabir Rachur is an ultra cyclist. He has participated in the race across America two times, becoming the first Asian to finish on the podium and the first Indian to finish the race on two occasions. So we learned a lot of things. Then I learned how my body reacts when it is in particular glucose level. Like my body is super quick and swift when. the sugar levels are between 110 to 130 after gaining lot of insights from the the uh, the uh, sensor we applied lot of things in our nutrition we tried them in our training rides and our training programs so because of that we saw how the energy level goes up how i sustain with the that particular energy how much i do to need to eat because sometimes when you don't have data if you don't have that fuel gauge meter in your car you will keep filling your tank so when you have that meter you know how much to eat and when to eat so that that helped a lot So I'm now used the Ultra Human M1 for a while and I'm quite impressed by how this entire system works but I'm curious how accurate is the reading coming from the sensor Are the readings comparable to say a blood glucose test which is kind of considered the gold standard when it comes to measuring your blood glucose level. So to find that out, I've um, I've picked up a blood glucose test and I'm going to I'm going to run a test with that and just compare it with the results from the sensor. When taking a blood test and comparing the instant results with the reading from the Ultra Human M1, the M1 has a lag of around 15 to 20 minutes in the reading, and both methods of measuring have margins of error. So that needs to be kept in mind when comparing the results. So there you have it. Uh, when it comes to the accuracy, it might not be the most accurate in the world, but seeing how your values progress over time is a way more valuable insight for most people the right foods in the right order fiber first and carbs last when you're having your food and to not drink your carbs and to uh, avoid having only carbs and very little fat and protein in your diet and fiber these type of things will really make sense when you see it on a progressive graph like a graph of progression over time like we can see with this app and uh, although it is expensive i do think it's worth the money here's a question for all of you can you stay fuller while eating fewer calories well one guide says yes you can and it sounds too good to be true It's called the Volumetrix diet. It tells you to eat low calorie but nutrient dense foods. It's also being touted as one of the most popular diets of 2022. In our next story, we'll try and separate the facts from all the hype. You eat less and feel fuller. Sounds like a utopian fantasy, right? Well, a new diet or eating method is telling you to do just that. Eat less and yet feel fuller. This is what the Volumetrics diet advocates. The food plan was introduced by Dr. Barbara Rolls in her book Volumetrics Feel Full on Fewer Calories. In this diet you're advised to consume around 1400 calories a day. Many would argue that that's too less. And try and exercise for at least 30 minutes daily. In this eating plan food is divided into four groups on the basis of calorie density. Category 1 would have low density foods like non-starchy fruit and vegetables. Category 2 would have starchy fruit and veggies along with some grains and low fat meat. And category 3 has all those medium density food items which we love and crave.
cheese, pizza, french fries, ice cream, cake, you get the gist. And category 4 would comprise high density options like chips, chocolate, candy and more. Basically all those items which are perceived as forbidden foods or cheat meals. So if you follow the volumetrics diet, you'll have to stick to categories 1 and 2, while categories 3 and 4 can only be consumed in limited quantities. Let's simplify it for you. The diet tells you to enjoy veggies like lettuce, cabbage, cauliflower and broccoli. Lean meat and low-fat dairy is also allowed and fruits like watermelon, berries, oranges and lemons are great for snacking. They are high in water content so they'll keep you fuller longer and are also high in nutrients such as iron, calcium and zinc. But if you want to save on the extra calories, you're advised to avoid nuts and seeds, oils and highly processed foods or consume them in moderation. Simply put, the diet aids weight loss by putting you in a calorie deficit where you consume lesser calories than you burn. So is the Volumetrics diet for everyone? Not really. Like most diets, it has its pros and cons. While it does not eliminate food groups altogether like Atkins or Keto, it may restrict you from eating certain foods, which could then lead to eating disorders. This is what experts say. Since there is no structured approach to eating, the diet may not impress those who are creatures of habit and like to plan their meals in advance. The Volumetrics diet on one hand promotes eating nutrient-rich foods and on the other limits nutrient-rich fats. So if you're planning to try out this diet, weigh the pros and cons and always consult a doctor first. You know what's my favourite part of the day? When my two-year-old pup pounces on me, especially after a long day at work. Our furry friends deserve all the pampering they can get, especially for the unconditional love that they shower upon us. Which is why today on The Good Life, we're visiting a pool party that's exclusively for our pampered pooches. After all, why should we have all the fun? The bond between a dog and its owner is like no other. And if humans can let their hair down on weekends, why should our furry friends be left behind? Well, right. Besides hosting a series of fun activities for the four-legged attendees, the event also partnered with one of India's leading pet care chains to tend to a dog's basic health needs. As a DCC partner of this event, you know we are having two doctors posted here and three para vets which helps in case of any emergency because in these type of events we have seen that injuries happen, the dog they turn into fight or maybe because of the weather or the heat they just maybe a shock happens. So we are prepared for all these eventualities and accidents. This 
was the first such gathering for six-year-old Oreo. He participated in games, posed for a sketch, and even got a health checkup. For him, it, it was a wonderful opportunity because he's a little anti-social. He's with his family only. So, but he loves drive. He loves to go out and shop. He loves driving around. So I think parties would be great fun for him to make new friends. I think such events should happen more often. And for two-year-old Bella, this was an opportunity to run around and socialize. I wanted her to uh, meet other dogs and have fun. And I myself was piqued with interest as to what's going on with this event. So I was excited. And I said, why not? Why not let her have a dog day out? How to live life to the fullest and enjoy each day as it comes. There are many things we can learn from man's best friend. Well, those dogs are definitely having a lot of fun and making us all jealous. And on that note, it's time now to say goodbye on The Good Life. You'll see you next week. Send us all your feedback and queries. And remember to always enjoy your weekend.